We'll talk a little bit about uh, medications. We call immunosuppressants. I never liked this really name, but that's what that's what we the name that we use. Um, some people also call them immunomodulators. And really, everything we use right now to treat Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis is technically an immunosuppressant in some way. I mean, trying to they're trying to control inflammation, reduce inflammation. So by definition, that means everything we use is immunosuppressing in some way. Uh, but we've, this term is caught for this particular group of medications. So these medications were been around for a long time. They're conventional therapies, uh, often first used, uh, interestingly, for organ transplants to prevent rejection, uh, but uh, later realized that they are good for treating inflammation of various uh, forms. And so used in people who have inflammatory conditions like Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. So a few categories. One is what we call thiopurines. That would include... Uh, Azathioprine, 6 mecaptopurine The brand names for that are Imuran and Purinethal. So we usually uh, refer to the brand names with these patients. And again, they got some complicated ways they work, but they probably uh, kill off some of the inflammatory cells. And they also block uh, how the cells uh, uh, reproduce the inflammatory cells by blocking their DNA uh, building. So that's uh, those are the thought to be the mechanisms by which Imuran and 6MP treat the, these diseases. Methotrexate, a fairly commonly used medication. It uh, blocks a particular enzyme and it reduces the production of uh, proteins and DNA as a result, which leads to lower levels of uh, inflammation. And then we don't use the other category very much, cyclosporin and tacrolimus. Um, they tend to be very limited to sick patients who are in hospital. So I, I suspect not many of you will have come across that uh, medication, but also reduces inflammation through a different way. I show this just because it's good to recognize some of the people who really contributed to uh, the history of these medications. And I, I'd like to show this because this uh, very successful female scientist uh, in a day when there weren't a lot of uh, females uh, in, the, in the science world uh, really contributed a lot to not just Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, but to medicine in general. She discovered AZT, which is one of the first medications to treat HIV as an example, but she was the discoverer of, uh, of Imuran and 6MP, and she won a Nobel Prize uh, 30 years ago for that. And these medications have been around for a while. I always like to show a bit of history. This is now 50 years ago, 1962. This is the first reported use of Imuran, azathioprine, for treatment of ulcerative colitis in an old uh, uh, medical journal. And you know, there's a story of a patient who did well and actually had a very good response uh, to these uh, medications and stayed well for a long time. So who do we use these for? Well, thiopurines, again, that's Imuran and 6MP. These are oral medications. They're used in both Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Some patients are just on these medications alone uh, to try to treat the disease and also uh, to try to prevent re uh, requiring more steroids. We call them steroid sparing agents. Uh, but they can also be used in combination of biologics. So some people will be on Remicade with Imuran, for example, the two together, because we realize that two treatments are often better than one. You get a better response, but also that uh, the, the way the, the biologic gets cleared out of the body with, if you're on one of these medications, the blood levels may get boosted. So you may get a higher level of the biologic, so it can be more effective. And with biologics, one of the worries, because these are proteins that you can develop antibodies against biologics. We call them anti-drug antibodies. And if you develop an anti-drug antibody, the drug, the drug doesn't work as well because your body's getting rid of it thinking it's a foreign invader. So that's why it, it says this, this, this thing shouldn't be here. I'm going to get rid of it. So it makes antibodies against the drug. And we realize that people who are on an immunosuppressant with their biologic don't do that as often. So it can prevent what we call sensitization to the biologic. I would say that these medications, Imuran and 6MP, the thiopurines are being used less likely, over, less, less often over time. And part of that relates to some of the long-term safety, which we'll discuss. Methotrexate is available as a pill. It also can be injected either sub-Q, it's under the skin, or IM into the muscle. It can be used for Crohn's disease. And just like uh, the other thiopurines, it can treat the disease, reduce steroid requirements, and you can use it in com combination biologics for the same reasons we just discussed. It's also actually on its own uh, a good medication for some of the arthritis that patients develop. So we sometimes use it in patients who have Crohn's disease or colitis and also have arthritis. We can add methotrexate in. 
It's good for Crohn's disease. Ulcerative colitis, you know, funny, the, the data aren't as really convincing. Some of the studies that should be done haven't shown methotrexate to be very effective for ulcerative colitis. So it tends to be used more in Crohn's disease. As I mentioned before, cyclosporin at the bottom here, rarely used, and that would be typically just for uh, patients in hospital with bad ulcerative colitis. And, and even there now, it's not used uh, very often. So what are the safety concerns? Um, well, these have generated a lot of discussion. I mean, these are good medications. They've been around for a long time. We're very familiar with them. And I've, I've got many patients who are continuing to do well on, on medications like Imuran. But you do need to monitor people. People on these treatments are supposed to be get regular uh, blood tests done. And if you're one of my patients, you, I've, I've been harping at you to, to get those blood tests done regularly. We monitor things like liver tests. We monitor the blood counts because in some patients, the bone marrow gets kind of dialed down and your white blood count can go down. A lot of people get nausea with these medications. Um, there is an increased risk of infection as with many of these therapies because it lowers your immune system a little bit. But the debate around the Imuran and 6MP has really been around potential long-term cancer risk. And some studies have shown us a small, I emphasize small increase in the risk of things like lymphoma and uh, skin cancer. So, you know, if, that's why we're not using it as much as we used to. We've got other options now that we can use that don't have those potential side effects. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it's something we talk to our patients about regularly. Methotrexate also needs regular blood tests. Nausea is common. Uh, infection risk is slightly increased. We have to watch the liver tests and the blood tests. There are some rare, unusual things like lung inflammation that can happen with methotrexate. But the critical thing to know is if you're a young woman on methotrexate, it is contraindicated in pregnancy. You have to use adequate contraception uh, and be very aware that this medication uh, can uh, cause you to lose a pregnancy. In fact, it was used uh, historically to induce uh, abortion. It's got that strong of an effect. And it should also be taken with folic acid. That's really because it can folic acid can help reduce some of the side effects that are associated with methotrexate. So these are still good medications. You do use them, but you have, if you're on them, you have to understand that there are some potential side effects. 